So don't do anything embarrassing because now we are on video. Oh, it looks like you have no hair. That's a good view, right? Okay. Oh no! <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, welcome to Yoga Shred. Okay, so, not your typical yoga class. So I'm gonna go over the structure of the class really quick and then we will um, officially get started. First of all, my name is Bernalyn Ivoric. I'm an instructor at um, the YMCA. I will be teaching this yoga, hit style yoga class, Yoga Shred, um, once we reopen, but for now, this is the way we are staying connected. And on behalf of the YMCA and behalf of myself, I am so grateful to be able to um, participate in this with you, even though we are kind of at a distance. So that's very exciting. So <clears throat> the Yoga Shred class, Sadie Nardini, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but Sadie Nardini class, it is a hit style yoga class. So all of the movements that we will be doing are based entirely on yoga, asanas or postures uh, with more of a kick to it. So we're gonna start out with a warm up, then we go into like five exercises, that's it, and they're hit style. So we're gonna do 40 seconds on with a 20 second rest, and there's four rounds of each exercise. So you do as you can, there's modifications, we will go over each of the modifications as we go through the class. Um, if you need to take a break, take a break, Please, please, please have water handy. So if you need a drink, you have it. It's important to stay hydrated during this um, and any exercise class, really. Okay, with all that being said, we are gonna start with a warm up. So let's get to our feet. I know most yoga classes start with um, Shavasana, but like I said, this is very, very different from a regular yoga class. So if you are not familiar with yoga asanas as we go, I will be explaining what the exercise should kind of look like. Okay, so we are gonna start in a wide leg mountain pose. So we're gonna take our feet just outside shoulder width apart. So a little bit wider than your regular stance, but not your super wide stance. You wanna have a good foundation. So start by rolling the shoulders back and down. We're gonna draw that breath deep into the belly so that you can feel it all the way down here. Feel your belly push out just below the navel. It's almost like you're making yourself look pregnant, right? <sighs> Pushing all of that air back out, cleansing breaths. We want to force as much oxygen out so we have a clean return. <sighs> just practicing a few cleansing breaths in through the nose, tucking the chin just slightly towards the chest, out through the mouth. <sighs> Good. We're gonna bend at the knees and we're gonna sunburst those arms up and around. Inhale, arms coming up overhead. Exhale, bringing them back down and around. Inhale. Don't make yourself lightheaded, so don't make those breaths too deep. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Inhale up, turning your palms to face out. Exhale, we're gonna hinge from the hips. So we're just gonna drop our bottom back, keeping our back somewhat straight. Forward fold, standing in that wide leg stance. Letting your hands rest on the floor if that's comfortable. You can even walk your feet out another inch or two inches. And just begin by swaying kind of forward and back. Letting your weight settle in on your feet. I don't know why it's doing this weird thing where I have to admit you from the um, waiting room, but it makes me feel really important that we have a waiting room, so. Okay, wide leg, forward fold. Just begin to rock forward and back. So you're kind of rocking to your heels and back up to the ball mount of your feet. Now we're going to kind of drop our chin to our chest and kind of collapse into the pose. So now we're going to go into more of a ragdoll version of the pose. You should feel the stretch through the back of the hamstrings and up through the glutes, maybe even in the low back a little bit deeper in this version. 
So offering no support with your hands. Your hands can either hang heavy or just rest very limply on your mat. Inhale, placing your hands back on the floor, pressing back up so that you're creating support with your hands. Exhale, walking your hands over towards your right foot. Keeping this left knee straight and keeping your left hip back. So as you walk this way, don't turn your whole body to take the stretch off. Force that left hip back. So you are just reaching, feeling how deep that stretch gets in the right hamstring. Breathing into that left side body. Inhale, walking your hands back to center, taking a full breath here. Inhale and exhale. And now walking your hands towards your left foot. Again, focusing and pushing the right hip back. Ooh, can you feel that even more when you push your hip back? Only go to a point where it's comfortable for you. If it's too much of a stretch, walk your hands back towards the center just a little bit. Exhale, coming back to center, taking a breath here. Bending at the knees, sending the arms out wide. Inhale, reaching all the way up. Hands coming together. Taking a breath here in this extended pose. Fingertips reaching towards the ceiling. Exhale, palms facing out into star or goddess pose. So bending at the knees, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Exhale. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, palms out. Inhale up. Exhale, hold for just three breaths. Inhale, straightening up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Shaking out those arms. We're gonna walk our feet in just a little bit, creating a little bit of movement in the legs, waking those legs up. Those legs are gonna be pretty active here in a minute, so we want those legs ready to work. Okay, we're gonna do last two last things and then we're gonna get started. So standing with your legs, just maybe shoulder width apart. Left arm straight down the left side body. Right arm, inhale, coming up overhead. Exhale, crescent shape spine to the left. Inhale up. Exhale, releasing that right arm down the right side body. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, crescent shape spine to the right. Fingertips reaching, creating space in that left side body. Inhale up. Exhale. Release, one more time on each side. Inhale, right arm up overhead, palm facing in. Exhale. Inhale up. Exhale. Release. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale to the right. Very, very good. Inhale up. Exhale, release. And now we're gonna inhale, setting those arms up, just shoulder height, turning the palms to face up, taking one small step out, so you're just a little bit wider than shoulder. Inhale, pulling up through the crown of the head. Exhale, twisting to the left. Setting that right arm back, so you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. Exhale, back to center. Inhale, to the right. Exhale, back to center. Palms facing down. Inhale to the left. Exhale back to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale back to center. Releasing those arms down. Let's get our yoga shred on. Are we ready? Okay. 
Like I said, these are 40 second intervals. So I'm gonna explain each exercise before we do them, and then we will go right into them. So the first one is called the boat pulse. So as we know, this is our traditional boat pose. In boat pulse, we're gonna come back on our forearms. So as we lift our legs, we're gonna puff out our stomach so that our belly is kind of supported in this pose. Um, sorry, I have to move my clock. I forgot my timer. We're gonna make two though, right? So back on our forearms, legs up. And all we're doing is inhale, exhale, extending the right leg. Inhale, back in, exhale, extending the left leg. Inhale, in, exhale, extend. Inhale, in, exhale, extend. That's it. 40 seconds on, 20 seconds rest. Ready? We have 10 seconds. So drop back to your forearms, puffing up that belly, legs up. Three, two, one, go. Halfway. Keep breathing. Five seconds. And break. Good. Take a quick break. Grab a drink of water if you need it. You have 15 seconds left. Make sure that with every exhale, you feel it. Do all of these movements with intention, and it will change the entire workout. Five seconds. Ready? Here we go. Go. Exhale. 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 Halfway. Ten seconds. Stop. Good. Take a break. Grab a drink. Shake it out. <sighs> Take a couple of long, soothing breaths. Five seconds, dropping back to those elbows, lift those legs, three, two, one, go. Keeping those feet flexed, you are kicking through the heels, moving with intention, breathing with intention. This is not rapid fire. This is intentional movement. Five seconds. And take a break. One more set of those. This class will be so much more fun when we can add music to it. <laughs> Just alone with your breath. Sometimes that 40 seconds is like, ugh, come on. Five seconds. Ready? Here we go. Last round and go. Kick, kick, kick. You got this. Halfway. Ten seconds. And done. Good job. Grab a drink of water. All right, 
So for this next one, we're not gonna have quite as much support, but if you need it, then I'm gonna show you the modification. So this next one is called boat twist. So again, traditional boat pose, right? So what we just did, we were supported back here, correct? This time, we are gonna be in the traditional boat pose, except our hands are gonna be at heart center. We're gonna inhale at the center, exhale, twist. Touching, trying to touch our elbows down to the floor next to us while keeping our toes lifted. Now, if that creates tension in the low back or your core muscles are just not strong enough to support that, that's okay. You can, as you need to, touch your toes down. You're still working the core and the side abdominal muscles, the obliques, okay? 10 seconds, we ready? Lift those legs, hands to heart center, inhale, go. Ten seconds. And break. Good news is there's only two of these because we're not alternating anything. So you only have one more of those. Are we ready? Woo! Stretch it out. Ten seconds. Ready? Roll it back. Lift those toes if you can. Hands to heart center. Inhale. Exhale. Go. Slow and controlled breathing, 20 seconds. Five seconds. And break, great job. Oh, roll it back. Nice and easy, stretch it out. Let your toes fall away so that you can fully relax all the muscles through the abdominals and through the hip flexors. So holding yourself in that position really shortens your hip flexors that are from here to here. So allow them to kind of relax and stretch out. Taking a full breath here, a couple of them. Drawing that breath down into the hips. Okay, break time's over. Let's do this. So we're gonna get out of that boat pose. Yay! We are gonna go into, it's called side plank, touch and go. So from your side plank, we are gonna be on our elbow. So not quite lifted all the way up on our wrist. We are gonna be on our elbow, legs extended. So here's your modifications and you decide where you are today and what you need from this practice. So. <clears throat> we're gonna be staying lifted, right? So you can take your right foot and swing it up here to help support the lift in this left hip. So there's space between my left hip and the floor. You can keep it here, or you can take it down by your ankle, which provides less support, but it's still giving you a little bit of support. I would not really recommend you doing with this with stacked feet, just because of the balancing issue. So you'll understand that in just a second. So deciding where you want your foot to be today. So say you're starting down here, right arm straight up overhead, exhale, twisting, so that the back of my hand is going to literally twist underneath. I'm gonna to touch down on the back of my hand on the exhale, inhale, extend up, exhale, inhale. 
exhale, inhale, slow and controlled. All of these movements are slow and controlled. Okay, five seconds. Ready? Lift, exhale, go. Ten seconds. And relax. Let's switch sides. So we're going to do two on each side. Wherever you had your foot on the other side, try to mimic that on this side. So if you need that support way up here, or if you need it down by your ankle. Ready? Lift, exhale. Maintaining that balance, maintaining that lift. Slow and controlled breath. I almost lost my balance. <laughs> Three, two, one, rest. Oh, switch back to the other side. Here we go. Get that elbow stacked just under the shoulder so that your weight is evenly distributed. Get that foot situated. Lift. Here we go. Exhale. Woo. Try again. Five seconds. And break. Switch to the other side. One more round. And then we're moving down, moving on to the downward dog series. Okay, elbow under the shoulder, foot wherever you need that support. Lift. Here we go. Exhale. Ten seconds. And break. Great job. Grab a drink of water. Take a minute to just kind of like roll it out, right? So you hold a lot of tension in your body with some of these poses. <sighs> Take a minute to release some of that tension. Take a couple of cleansing breaths. <sighs> Are we ready? We were born ready. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was not born ready. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do downward dog push ups. So, downward dog traditionally. Your feet, if you're on a mat, if you're on a yoga mat, your feet would go to the outside of the mat so that your pinky toe just lines up with the outside of the mat. Same with your fingertips. They should be like your outside, I'm sorry, your pinky finger. The outside of your pinky finger should line up with the outside of the mat. That just gives you a good foundation. 
So as you lift your hips to the ceiling, you're gonna let your head fall so the crown of your head is pointing towards the floor. So in a regular push-up, right, you'd be pushing straight down so that your chest is going towards the floor. In a downward dog push-up, your head, your chin is tilted towards your chest, and it's your head that's going towards the floor. So exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale. Got it? So at no point do I want you really looking up and straining your neck this way to do the push up. Keep your chin dropped, lower the top of your head. Your head doesn't actually have to touch the floor. You just bend your elbows to the point where you feel like you've engaged your muscle groups and your arms. Push back up. Ready? Here we go. Hips up. Three, two, one, here we go. Exhale. Fifteen seconds. Three, two, one, bend at the knees. We're gonna drop it back to child's pose just to stretch it out. <sighs> Good. Coming back up to tabletop. Getting your toes in the right position, curling your toes under. Three, two, one, pushing those hips up and begin. Don't hold your breath. Exhale fully. Ten seconds. And break. Good job. Sit back, take all the pressure off your arms. A couple of good cleansing breaths. There we go, five seconds. In place, toes in place, fingers in place, hips up. Here we go. Halfway. Three, two, one, rest. One more. Release the any tension that you're holding in those arms. Maybe roll your head side to side, but oh, here we go. Fingers in place, toes in place, hips up. Here we go. Exhale. Break. Oh, is anybody feeling it in their shoulders? I am. I'm feeling it in my shoulders. <laughs> All right, guys.
So we have two more exercises in the downward dog series, and then we go into our cool down. The next one is okay. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna say the best for last. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Okay. So for this next one, oh, release those shoulders a little bit, right? So we are gonna press up into down dog. So traditional three-legged down dog is literally just all your weight on one foot, the other leg extended up kind of behind you. So we are gonna go three-legged down dog into mountain climber pose. We're not gonna do mountain climbers. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna do right side first. So it'll go right side, left side, right side, left side. Right leg up, inhale, exhale. Bringing that knee in. Inhale, exhale. So your knee will come up to touch the same elbow. Like your right knee swings back, comes up and touches your right elbow. Now I cannot emphasize this enough, but I need you to hear me. This is not a speed exercise. It's much more important that you keep your breath long and smooth because this is the kind of exercise you could hyperventilate on, definitely. Being a little bit upside down, a little bit of an inversion, taking in too much oxygen. Keep your breath long and smooth, fully exhaling on each, um, every time you bring your knee in. Um, it doesn't matter if you only do three in the whole 40 seconds. Form and breath is far more important than numbers in this one, okay? For the most part form and breath is more important. But I want you to really, really gauge. If you start to feel dizzy or lightheaded, drop down, take a break. Here we go, 10 seconds. Curl your toes under, five seconds. Hips up, right leg up, here we go. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Five seconds. And release. Good. Take a breath. Let your blood slow back, flow back down the rest of your body. <sighs> ready? 10 seconds. Let's get ready. Toes in place. Now, I'm sure you noticed you have to walk your right foot in just a little bit. So here we go. Press up, right foot in, left foot up, exhale. Ten seconds. And relax. Now, we've gone through two. If you feel like you're lightheaded or if your shoulders can't take it, stay here on your knees and you can do the exact same thing from your knees. Okay? So that's your modification if you need a break. Otherwise, pushing back up. Right foot up, here we go. Five seconds. And break. Only one left. Left side. Here we go. Take a breath. Hands to the outside. 
toes to the outside. Well, right foot in a little bit, sorry. Hips up, here we go, last time. Exhale. Fifteen seconds left. Ready and break. Oh, let those knees go wide. Let your toes come together. We're going to rest our forehead right here on our forearms. Oh. Grab a drink of water when you're ready. We only have one left. Okay, so. Good news and bad news. Good news is we only have two rounds of this one. So apparently at the beginning of class, when I said we do four rounds of everything, I lied. Apparently I lied so much that I don't even realize it because I didn't catch it until just the second. So the good news is there's only two. Bad news is this one can be a little bit challenging. So here's your options as we go into the last exercise. Yes, we are back in somewhat of a down dog position. It's really important that you have a good foundation on this one. So if you don't feel like you have the balance or the upper body strength for this, then please wait and watch for the modification. Fingers displayed wide. We're gonna push up into the down dog position, but I'm gonna walk my feet in and bend at the knees, right? So I'm in somewhat of a down dog position. My gaze, is right between my feet. I'm staring at the clock, which is right behind me. So that works out well. And here's what we're doing. We're doing the double leg kick. Inhale, exhale. For 40 seconds. Now, we're doing two rounds, two rounds. So if double leg doesn't suit you today, totally fine. Not sure it suits me today, but I'm the instructor, so technically I have to do it. So here's your other choice. You can do one leg. And then on the next round, switch. Now, single leg or both leg, you are not kicking all the way up into a handstand. We are just simply kicking to get both feet up off the ground. Okay, that's all we're doing. All of our weight will shift forward onto our hands. If you kick too high, you're gonna kick yourself over and you're gonna hurt yourself or break whatever's on that table behind you or just look really silly. So let's avoid all of the above. We have 30 seconds. Grab a drink, decide where, what you're gonna do, and get ready. It's only two sets of 40 seconds, guys, that's it. 10 seconds. Let's push up, walk our feet forward, bending at the knees. Three, two, one, go. Breathe in, breathe out. In, out. Five. And break. Good job, guys. <sighs> One more. One more set of those. We go into our cool down. 10 seconds. 
Now, if you did both leg and you decided to do one leg, just alternate your legs, but you're not just working one side. Push up and go. break. Oh, <sighs> stretch it out long on your mat. Belly down, extending your arms out in front, resting your forehead right on your forearms. On your next inhale, drawing your hands up under your shoulders, pressing up to tabletop, bringing your toes together, letting your knees go wide, and pushing back to fall in leap, extending those arms, letting your forehead rest on the floor. Inhale, coming up to tabletop, swinging your legs around so that you find yourself just in easy pose. Oh, sitting up nice and tall, letting one foot travel out in front of the other or just gently stacking your ankles so one is on top of the other, whatever is most comfortable. We're gonna begin to slow that breathing down. So we're gonna do some gentle shoulder rotations. So our shoulders will come up and back on the inhale, down and around on the exhale. So matching each shoulder rotation to your breath. Up and back on the inhale, down and around to the exhale. Now let's reverse it. So it's up and forward. I'm just going to reverse the rotation. Up and forward, inhale, down and around, exhale. Good. Let's take our hands. What are we? <laughs> We're at the very end of class. Okay, so we are going to take our hands behind us, clasp our hands. It's going to be like this, nice and tight behind us, pulling back, squeezing those shoulder blades together, releasing the chest, let your head fall forward, breathing into that belly. Releasing that grip and swinging your arms forward so that the right arm is going to cross over the left arm, wrapping your arms all the way around, kind of seeing if you can grab onto your shoulder blades, dropping your chin to your chest and kind of rolling through the spine, collapsing into it, pulling those shoulder blades apart. Inhale, sitting up. Bring your arms back out to the side. Swing them back in, this time with the left arm, hand crossing over the right, reaching back, finding those shoulder blades, exhale. Collapsing into it, rolling through the spine. Let's 
sitting up nice and tall, releasing those arms. Collectively, everybody at once, drawing in a very, very deep inhale into the belly. Dropping your jaw for an open mouth exhale. One more time. Inhale into the belly. Exhale. Very good. That's it. We worked hard today. Thank you so much for joining me for our yoga shred, um, our hit yoga class. Hopefully we will be very together very, very soon back in the studio. Um, I will not be with you because we have a YMCA meeting next Thursday at this time, but I will be back with you very, very soon. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me, whether you're watching this live, participating now, or watching this sometime later on. Either way, I'm so grateful to share space with you guys. Have a great day. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining me.